Hello, I'm Pastor Stephanie Christoffels, Pastor for Worship and Engagement at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And I want to personally welcome you to this online worship opportunity. Please know that wherever and whenever you are joining us, you are welcome here because we're following the example of Jesus and welcoming everyone for who they are, just as they are. If you're feeling weary, if you're struggling with something in your life, if you feel unheard, or even if everything's going pretty well, we trust that God will meet you in this time of worship. We know that God will work through our song, our prayers, and our message to refresh your soul and prepare you for another week of being the hands, feet, and heart of Jesus for your neighbors. As we prepare for our time of worship together, we are reminded that we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. years ago, while I was in Kuwait, there was a marathon that quite a few people participated in. Now I've done half marathons, but I have neither the time nor the ambition to run a full marathon. No thank you. 26.2 miles of running at one time? Nope. However, a friend of mine and I did get up at zero dark 30 and we sat along the marathon route to cheer on all the runners. We had a number of different signs that we held up. I wish I had a picture of this one, but the favorite for the runners had a large circle drawn on it and it said, press here to power up. And we had so many people that actually came and slapped it. It was great. Another favorite was good job, random stranger. Now we knew a handful of the people who were running, but it was just, it was a blast to yell and cheer and encourage all of the runners as they ran through the dirt and the sand for hours. As someone who has run literal running races before, I know how great it is to have someone cheering you on as you go mile after mile. It's also encouraging when you're running a sprint. There's something about having a person cheer you on as you're trying to dig deep within yourself to keep going that makes you think, I can do this. I can go just a little longer. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jepheth, 
of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. In our focus text for today, the writer of Hebrews gives us a history of times of perseverance or persistence in the Bible. Persistence in doing something despite difficulty, or delay in achieving success. We hear about the Israelites passing through the Red Sea, of the prophets who were faithful even through persecution and trials. All of these individuals ran a race, so to speak. Now running a race doesn't necessarily mean literally running. It's about having a goal or an end state that we are striving for. Now, this takes effort. It takes discipline, it takes consistency, it takes dedication. Running a race is not always easy. It's about pacing ourselves. When I literally run in a race, I usually start off way too fast. About a mile in, I'm starting to get tired already. And so then I slow down and I fall into a more comfortable pace. And for long races, like half marathon, by the time I get to mile 10, I'm ready to quit. Oh my gosh, I'm just ready to be done. And then I keep going. And around the last mile, there's a burst of adrenaline. And then I can sprint to the finish. Now looking at that from a non-running perspective, I see a lot of similarities. We get super excited about something that we start. We go all in and sometimes, we get overloaded or we overwhelm ourselves. And then we start falling into our rhythm and we have a pretty good steady pace in whatever we're doing. But towards the end, we start to get tired. We just wanna be done. The end is not quite in sight and it seems like there's so much work to keep going. But we just keep putting one foot in front of the other. We keep moving, even when it's tough. And then when we start nearing the finish of whatever it is that we're doing, we get excited. We see the finish line and we can complete what we started, finally. Now the sky is the limit for what race you are currently running. Maybe it's something super exciting, but maybe it's something awful. Maybe it's a challenge in your life, a health issue, an addiction. Maybe your race does have a defined finish line that you can see, but maybe your finish line doesn't come until you're at the end of your life. Maybe you are in that part of your race right now where you just wanna quit. This is where our cheerleaders come in. Who are your cheerleaders? Who are the people that encourage you to keep going? Who are the people who come up beside you and are willing to walk or run next to you? The people who are on the sidelines, who hold up signs and yell encouragement. The people who hand out water or food to keep you going. When have you done that for others? Now, sometimes we may wonder what these biblical stories have to do with our lives. 
Why does it matter what happened to someone thousands of years ago in a completely different context and place in life than me? These individuals, these prophets and teachers and wanderers, these everyday people, they all went through some crap. They went through rough times. The people of the Old Testament, they all ran their races waiting for their Messiah to show up. And they died waiting, but they still remained faithful. They still believed. They still persisted. They had faith that the promises would be fulfilled even when they couldn't see the finish line. Now we, we live in the time post Jesus, post Jesus walking on earth. We hear stories of Jesus. We have the promise that Jesus is coming back. We have the promise that Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us now. And we have the things that Jesus told us to do. And we're waiting for that second coming of Jesus, whatever that looks like. Our ancestors showed us that we can persist. The people around us encourage us to keep going even when times are tough, even when we just want to quit. And we're cheerleaders for others. There's something really life-giving about cheering on others instead of tearing them down. I once heard this piece of advice. Blowing out someone else's candle doesn't make your shine brighter. I love it, it's so true. Instead, when we help light the candles of others, we all shine brighter. We all have this race that we're running, whether that race is long or short, easy or difficult. It takes dedication, perseverance, discipline, consistency, and effort. God put us in the lives of others to help lift each other up. The good news is that God is also our cheerleader, walking and running with us each step of our races. Let us run the race that has been set before us with perseverance, looking to Jesus, being surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, both who have come before us and who are now with us, cheering us on to the end. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. This next week, I encourage you to take a deeper look by journaling about, meditating on, or talking about these questions, either by yourself or with another person or a small group. The first, when in your life have you run a race? And how were you able to persevere through that race, whatever it was? And the second, who are your cheerleaders? And who are you a cheerleader for?
If today's reflection speaks to you in some way and you feel that it would be well received by others in your life, please feel free to share it. Here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, we wish to follow Jesus' example of sharing his life-giving message with others, regardless of who they are or where they come from. We thank you for taking the time to watch, listen, and be fed. Continuing to offer our online and our in-person ministries are made possible through your support and generosity. If you feel that you are in a place to give of your time, your talents, and your treasures to the mission of Bethlehem Lutheran Church, you can do so in a variety of ways. We have many opportunities to volunteer or participate in the life of the congregation, and you can find those on our website or through subscribing to our weekly e-communication, The Shooting Star. If you are in a place to give of your finances, you can do so through our website, through mailing a check to the church, or by texting a dollar amount through text to give at 320-289-4093. Any way that you are able to support the mission of the church is greatly appreciated. Prayer is such an important part of our faith journey. If you have a prayer request that you wish to share with our faith community, please leave a comment, send us a message, or contact the church office. Each week, our staff and our congregation pray for those who have been named to us. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, help us to run the race set before us. Help us to be persistent, to persevere, and to be cheerleaders to others. Surround us with people who will encourage us to be our best and who will walk or run with us through all of the races of life. Be with our leaders who are called to lead with compassion, mercy, grace, and wisdom. Help to heal divides among us. Bring peace to areas where war is wreaking havoc. Help us to be aware of the struggles of our brothers and sisters in Christ those who have been marginalized, and help us to change our attitudes and our actions for the better. Be with all who are mourning the death of loved ones, those who have thoughts of suicide, those who are struggling in mind, body, and spirit. Hear the silent prayers of our hearts. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you go back into the world to be the hands, feet, and heart of God, take this blessing with you. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you and keep you in God's grace today and always. Amen. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.